My name is Jamie Golden, and I have been involved with ADL for virtually my entire adult life. I currently serve as co-chair of ADL's Associate Board, and it was my great honor to receive the Krupp Leadership Award from ADL just several weeks ago. Graduating from ADL's Glass Leadership Institute was a defining moment in my ongoing experience with ADL. I understand that many of the 2013 Glass participants are in the room this evening, as well as many Glass alumni, and I would like to give you all a very warm welcome. In the last two years, I have traveled with other ADL young leaders from across the country on many special missions to Germany, Vienna, and Washington, D.C. These trips have instilled in me a more intimate understanding of the depth and scope of ADL's impact around the world. In spite of all I have done with ADL, I feel like I am just getting started. My appreciation and understanding of ADL's mission grows deeper every year, and I cannot wait to see what I can do to help strengthen the League in its second century. It is now my pleasure to introduce tonight's keynote speaker, Robert Gibbs. Robert is a trusted advisor and strategist to President Obama. He has been with the President since the early days of Obama's 2004 Senate race. Most recently, he served as Senior Advisor for the President's re-election campaign. After joining Obama's Senate campaign as Communications Director in 2004, Mr. Gibbs stayed with Obama and eventually became his Senior Strategist for Communications and Message during the 2008 presidential campaign. During four years of intense campaigning and close contacts, Gibbs became an integral part of the President's team. According to the New York Times, Mr. Gibbs advised President Obama on politics, strategy and messaging, and spent more time with him than any other advisor. In 2008, Robert Gibbs was named Press Secretary of the Obama Administration and assumed this role in 2009. His rapport with and access to the President provides him with intimate insights. Today, Mr. Gibbs continues to be among the President's most trusted advisors, and he speaks with authority from a White House's insider's perspective on the Obama administration. Our speaker also served as press secretary of John Kerry's 2004 presidential campaign and has specialized in several U.S. Senate campaigns. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Robert Gibbs. Thank you. First, let me say how, how honored I am to take part in a celebration commemorating ADL's 100 years of work and advocacy fighting against anti-Semitism, bigotry, and discrimination in all of its forms. What began as an idea with two desks in a law office in Chicago has flourished to become the leading organization on this planet against hate and discrimination. And secondly, let me say how humbled I am to attend a dinner to honor someone of the stature of Jonathan for all of the good that he and his family do in this community and for this country to make the lives of so many in it better. And I am truly struck by their belief that giving back isn't charity, but instead an obligation because they have been truly fortunate in life. I was told this was ADL of New England's biggest dinner audience ever because it combined those who had fought for decades for a better world and who have come to these dinners all those years, as well as by those who are here for the first time because of Jonathan's involvement in so many great works. We truly live in a remarkable world these days. The promise of equality and acceptance is still all too often con confronted daily by intolerance and discrimination. Technology never before imagined brings a vitality of interconnectedness to the very tips of our fingers. But, th but that technology and that abundance of information can be used to stoke fear and spread ignorance and hate like never before with a speed unparalleled in our lives. Now, I am certainly not here to give a political speech tonight. 
I believe if there's one thing we can all agree on, we've had enough of those this year. But I do want to touch on two issues that I believe are important to all of us, especially to the president, to the ADL, and to Jonathan. The first is immigration reform. In this election, for the first time ever, the per percentage of the electorate that was Hispanic totaled double digits. Plus two. The voters in our elections are beginning to look more and more like our country. And regardless of which party you support, that is a remarkably good thing for America. Yet we, a country of immigrants, still struggles with the issue of immigration and the desperate need for comprehensive immigration reform. And all too often, it is an issue where we see the dialogue filled with the most virulent strains of hate and xenophobia imaginable. This is an issue I know is as near and dear to many of you as it is to the President. It is something only together we can solve. And thankfully, I believe we're closer to a legislative fix than we've ever been before. As this election showed, both parties now understand that action has to be taken. But interestingly, in many ways, I also believe, despite failures in the past, the legisla legislative solution will in fact be the easiest part. Getting this through Congress and signed by the President can only be the very beginning. The far tougher challenge lies after that in combating the hate-filled rhetoric of those who won't accept it by those who believe our diversity is a weakness that causes our society's problems rather than the source of our greatest strength. And it will take the voice, the voices of all of our leaders and our citizens alike with the continued help of, the group, of groups such as this to continue that march and into our public square to stamp out the voices of hate. Then and only then will the promise of legislation meet the test of true reform. The second issue is one that I have spent a lot of time thinking about most recently, and one that despite all of the disagreement we've had in the past year politically, one that each party ca categorizes as the most as one of the most important civil rights issues of our time, and that is education. I've spent time thinking about our schools and our children because when I left public service in the White House, I too felt an obligation and a need to give back. So last year I started an after-school reading program for first through sixth graders in conjunction with the Boys and Girls Club in my hometown of Auburn, Alabama. And I'm fortunate I'm traveling there on Monday to celebrate the holiday season at the project by, of course, giving the children in the program a book for Christmas. I'm always heartened after a trip there, but also reflective of the challenges the children in our program face each day. You see, I believe nothing threatens our promise of equality and equal opportunity for all like the lack of a quality education. We are reminded often of the unevenness of our current system. This fall, it was reported that the average reading score on the SAT for the 2012 graduating class was the lowest recorded in four decades. Now, if that wasn't shocking enough, a majority of the test takers, almost 60%, did not score high enough to indicate likely success in college. And this from a group taking a test to get in to college. 60% unlikely to succeed in college. 
without the ability to read and do math, without going to college or getting training in a skill or a craft, what will become of the students in my program or throughout this country? Where will they find work? What will they do? How will they succeed in life? I don't need and you don't need a crystal ball to know the future of our to know the future of our country to know the future our country faces when so few have the real opportunity they need to succeed. While it may not be our child in that school, we are all a little poorer if the dreams of just one child are extinguished because of a school that fails them. For a country as strong and as powerful as ours, it is more than just a shame. It is something we must strive every day to change and improve until every single child has the type of world-class education they need and deserve to succeed. Jonathan, I want to conclude tonight by reading a letter from your dear friend and a fellow Columbia alum. Dear Jonathan, I extend to you my heartfelt congratulations on receiving the Distinguished Community Service Award from the Anti-Defamation League of New England. The strength of ADL's mission, unchanged since its founding in Chicago almost a hundred years ago, lies in its duality. To confront anti-Semitism and to secure fair treatment for all people. You have been a quiet champion of many worthy causes that embody this broad commitment to social justice. And I am pleased to see you recognized for your tremendous work. In the years ahead, I trust you will continue to inspire others to take up the mission of building a more just and tolerant world. Sincerely, Barack Obama. Jonathan, because of your work, children here won't be trapped in a school that fails them, but instead they will have the opportunity to dream as big as any other child in Boston. Because of the work of the ADL, hate crimes are punished. Equal opportunity and justice are a greater reality for all, not simply for some. And the shrill voices of intolerance are drowned out by equality and acceptance. So thank you, Jonathan, for what you have done and will continue to do to improve the lives of so many, to make softer the edges of this world. Thank you to the ADL for your century of work in fighting for liberty, freedom, equality, and tolerance. And how appropriately you begin your second hundred years envisioning a world without hate. There is still much to be done. And we look forward to both of these continuing as we endeavor to make this great land, to move this great land toward the more perfect union we all hope for.